Hi, I'm here today with John Stewart, who is a biophysicist, and what we're talking about are colloidal minerals and the importance of colloidal minerals in our health. One of the reasons why I was excited to talk about it is because I actually use John's Electrum, which is colloidal gold and silver, as well as I've used colloidal silver for many years. However, during this time and during the pandemic, there's been a lot of fear, and I specifically had some experiences where I started to question the validity of colloidal silver. So I went to who I know would know best about colloidal silver, and so we're here today to have John answer some questions and really demystify something that has been so valuable. And we're in this time where people have really degraded its potential when actually this is something that can truly help you and your family. We, our biggest purpose really, John, is to help the world heal and to find enlightenment and to live to your highest potential in this world. And we really believe that colloidal minerals can help you attain that. So John, I just wanted to speak uh, about colloidal minerals and some of the generators that you make. And one of the things that had confused me and I didn't quite understand was the zeta potential in your colloidal minerals, not only the silver and gold, but in all of the colloidal minerals that you make. So could you just explain to us what zeta potential means and why it's so important? Yeah, uh, well, zeta potential is an electrical charge. It's negative, so it's electrons, and it is responsible for the colloidal phenomenon. So you've got these clusters of atoms and they, they each have a negative charge uh, in millivolts, uh, and they, they come up against each other, and they, they cannot combine and agglomerate. So they stay, they have a, a, long, a life, they have a longevity that, it, as it circulates through the human body, doing its work, but yet not being metabolized by the biochemistry of the human body, unlike uh, an ion, okay. like each metal is a positively charged atom called an ion. So there's a difference between ionic metals and minerals versus nanoparticulate minerals. Uh, and that's the distinction that we want to talk about. Okay. Today. One of the things when I was watching one of your past videos, you had said it's very important that the water is moving. And what makes your colloidal silver a bit different is that you're putting in, say, the mineral plate into the water, but that you also have a stir stick going. And not everybody makes their colloidal minerals in that way. So could you just explain why that's important? And I imagine it has to do with the ionic nature that's right it, the process is the one that that most of us use and is the most easy to manipulate is electrolysis which you all remember from high school physics that it's two plates and in water it, it breaks down water if the voltage is high enough and it breaks the water into hydrogen and oxygen so that's an inevitable part of electrolysis, but in the process of doing so, the, the positive plate or anode is releasing a stream of atoms, one at a time or two or three at a time, and these form little clusters, mm -hmm. uh, and, and they, 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 they have a unique chemistry, they are a unique state of matter. If you read the literature, there's a lot of excitement now called nanomedicine. It, down at that level, it's, it's like one nanometer, two nanometers. There's a bunch, like 20, 25 atoms uh, that create uh, an, not only at uh, an atomic level, but at a quantum level. See, we are now dealing with quantum mechanics at that level. Anything less than about 25 nanometers uh, will demonstrate the phenomena of quantum physics and quantum mechanics. So the smaller the particle, the more potential there is in it for healing? Uh, that's right. The more potential, uh, the ratio potential to area. It turns out, uh, I have a, a chart here. Uh, this this uh, is a picture 
of a nanoparticle. Um, there's, a, there's a core or nucleus, which is the positive ion, but that positive ion has a, a membrane, a double layer called around it. See the blue, the blue is positive. That's the uh, that's the neg that's the ion of the metal. Okay. And it 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 um is released by the anode, which is positive. So the the ion is positive, but on the other side of this double layer is the negativity of the outer charge, and it's that negativity that has a kind of an antioxidant effect. Okay. that neutralizes the damaging free radicals, for example. And it turns out that this uh, this electron structure is the combination of all of the atoms inside. So we don't want to go right down to zero, mm -hmm. to, uh, to monoatomic. Mm -hmm. It turns out that um, this is a chart of the ideal particle size is, a, is between two and five nanometers. Is, is, I see that, and yes. the, I, I've had my uh, silver water uh, and zinc and gold water analyzed by analytic companies. Okay. Yeah. So independently, really. And they, they have uh, mechanisms like there's a there's a machine called the zeta, zeta sizer that measures the zeta potential and it measures the nanometer size of the of the particle. Malvern is one of the companies who make who makes that. So here's a, a readout, a plot of the range of zeta potential. This is done by a company called Anton Parr, and they use a variety of different uh, instruments. Now, this red graph is my colloidal silver or colloidal mineral, mm -hmm. and the, the, the zeta potential goes away beyond minus 100, which is which is amazing, incredible that it can, we can get it that high and powerful. And that powerful charge is capable of instantaneously going to a point when it gets in touch with the virus or the bacteria. Mm -hmm. It zaps like a lightning, literally like lightning, uh, on this tiny nanometer um, point, and it punctures a hole. In, in the fabric of the virus or the bacteria. Okay, so it's actually neutralizing a virus or a bacterium. It is damaging. It, it's it's damaging, damaging it. And it actually carries frequencies that I'm now doing research with, yeah. frequencies that are uh, appropriate to the virus or the disease. And, and for example, there's a frequency book here available with all hundreds of frequencies that are relevant to different diseases and uh, organisms. So I, I make sure that I put these frequencies with a frequency, multi-wave frequency generator, mm -hmm. and that acts like a carrier wave, like in radio or television. There's a carrier wave, and on that carrier rides the music mm -hmm. or the picture. So you've got to have both. So what right. we put our... Uh, special healing frequencies, love frequency, 528 hertz, uh, music, Mozart, and I have a favorite, it's the um, Gregorian chant. And the reason for that, the Gregorian chant has very low vibration, almost like the, the Zen, the Buddhist monks, oh, okay. you know, very low, low frequency. Okay. And that uh, carries the intention, the higher intention of the of the peop the person who's using it. In my case, my generator has a crystal that that can s can store this kind of energy, just like uh, 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 homeopathy or radionics, and that goes into the water. And water is a liquid crystal. Yes. It too can store information. The nanoparticle is a very sophisticated uh, entity. And, and I say entity because it interacts with consciousness, which okay. is part of the fundamentals of quantum physics. So if I could ask you a question there, because I get really excited mm. about anything that's using frequency, vibration, 
calibration, calibrating, because that's what I do in my practice. Mm -hmm. So when you say that not only, you know, really what it sounds like you're saying is that the silver water itself or the colloidal silver and the colloidal gold, they have this potential, the zeta potential that will neutralize and damage a virus or a bacterium. But on top of that, you are essentially programming a vibrational frequency that calibrates at a very specific point mm -hmm. that is healing in nature to the body. Yes, that, that, there's a purpose and intention. Mm -hmm. And if you do, read the work of Professor Tiller, <coughs> yeah. uh, he's a <coughs> biophysicist who has, has uh, invented electronic devices that can carry that intention. And that, that intention has the power to change the, uh, the, the characteristics of water right. for healing. And that's one of the topics I want John and I to speak about is intention and the intention behind healing. That'll definitely be another talk. Another talk. Yeah. Um, but I just get really excited to know that there is just so many levels of healing to John, what John produces and with his generators. And these generators are available for home use, not just for large companies, although he does make generators for large companies. But this is really, he's creating generators that can be used in your home that you can make your own healing fresh, remedies. Yeah, fresh, powerful, uh, concentrated uh high quality professionally made mm -hmm. bottle silver which brings up a point about unprofessionally made well this is why i'm asking about the zeta potential because yeah. i don't think people quite understand what the difference between say what you make and what i buy at the store because i know at the store i can maybe buy 10 to 50 parts per million mm -hmm. i know the colloidal silver that i got from you is 50 parts per million so it's much more powerful and potent can you talk about that difference well yes that chart i showed actually is a comparison of of my product with other competitors okay. wh whose zeta potential is a way down below 20. Okay. it's not bad but 20 is is not good enough so it'll help but it's not going to neutralize a virus Oh yeah, it, it works. Will? It works. Okay. Like one of the one of the uh, competitors is probably the most popular. I've uh, definitely seen it's that. It's sovereign in the silver, for yeah. example. But if you look at the bottle, it says uh, it's a dietary supplement, but ten parts per million. Well, not, Why yeah. is it so low? Exactly. And and then the quality is not that great. Right. The, the zeta potential quality and the particle size is way up, almost a hundred nanometers, which cannot possibly get through the blood brain barrier, right. which needs at least a smaller than 20 nanometers. Okay. Now, so, which brings up the point of these uh, crudely made mm -hmm. uh, colloidal minerals uh, can give rise to things like argyria, the blue, the blue man syndrome. Yeah, I definitely wanted to talk about that yeah. because whenever I talk about colloidal silver, people go on good old Google yeah. and it brings up this man who is a very dark blue color. And I just never really bought into that. It felt confusing and alarming and it comes up all the time. And I know you and I have talked a little bit about it. And I think you actually kind of chuckled and said, that's not real. That's mm -hmm. propaganda. And, you know, it's not to stir a pot or anything like that. That's not what I'm trying to do. But you just wouldn't turn that color of blue all over your body, would you? No, I, I, I met people who, who have turned a slate blue because they, mm -hmm. they were using crude ionic colloidal silver. Okay. Now, in the case of the blue man, I, when you look at the pictures, it's like a sky blue. It's obviously coloring, mm -hmm. food coloring that's painted on his face to make right. it. Uh, look to emphasize and the reason I take it every day mm -hmm. is because it's a prevention against Alzheimer's right so people say what's Alzheimer's got to do with it mm -hmm. well the answer is the literature now indicates that uh, the dementia and other brain disorders are the long-term results of residual viruses particularly herpes virus oh. that, that cause the damage so I I want to neutralize and sterilize my brain 
okay. as a prevention against uh, MS, and Alzheimer's, and other similar disorders. Is there a limit, you know, with with lots of things, including natural remedies, if we take too much, it can have a toxic effect. So is there is there that potential with colloidal silver? Are there things that people should know in terms of being safe? Because sometimes people think, oh, this is so good, I'll just, the more I take, the better. Is there some sort of standard we could help people with? Well, the, 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 the literature on that, the safety aspects, show that even people who work in silver mines and silver plants, photography, mm -hmm. who are ingesting it uh, and have ingested it for 20 or more years, they don't get any damage other than maybe a, a bit, bit of a blue color uh which you don't want i mean i don't want to have blue well, well the, the, the royal families of europe <laughs> the blue bloods mm. uh, were taking it uh so it's a small price to pay mm -hmm. and in their case what they took was silver acetate now i'll tell you how they took it they had their silver goblets they'd fill them with wine mm. they let the wine ferment for a week or so with yeast, and it formed an acetic acid, which is vinegar. I see. And, it, it, and in the silver and the acetic acid formed enough silver acetate, and they would drink it, and it would protect them against the, uh, the scourges, the worst scourge was smallpox, mm. very disfiguring. And royal, royal uh, royalty doesn't like to be disfigured. Right. So they would take that. And to, to complete the story is studies have now been done on kidney and liver and other functions showing that there's been no morbidity, no un adverse effects on these organs in the, the human body, or animal body. Does the body detox it out? You know, because a, a metal like mer too much mercury or aluminum is toxic to the body, or at least that's my understanding. Uh, the copper to some extent is, so we don't want to take too much copper, mm -hmm. but, but zinc, magnesium, uh, silver, gold, platinum, palladium are all, uh, th th they don't give rise to okay. um, adverse effects. I mean, as I say with silver, people, uh, I, I, I've taken it for 25 years mm -hmm. and I, I, I show no signs of, of being blue. It would show mm -hmm. up in, in the eye, in the lips, okay. uh, particularly. I mean, for me, I take uh, a teaspoon. And it's maybe half to a whole teaspoon, maybe yeah. every other day. If I feel something coming on, I do, or I'll, I'll actually can clean my nostrils uh, with Q-tips and, and that type of thing. But I know also I've suggested that people could inhale specifically for their lungs, um, bacterial infections. Would, would that help? Uh, definitely. People who have a, a lung disorder, pneumonia, or they're they're susceptible or they're or actually have an infection mm -hmm. when you inhale the nebulized ultrasonically nebulized particles mm -hmm. they go right down to the alveoli of the of the lungs mm -hmm. and they can very quickly uh, disable the viruses okay so and it can save lives which brings up an important point mm -hmm. if if this can save lives that it obviously can do from the thousands of articles now yes. on my secret website, colloidal <laughs> well, solutions, <laughs> dot net. Then there are <laughs> actually thousands of articles now. It cannot be denied. They speak for themselves. Yes. So anyone who is trying to debunk this or say that it doesn't work is actually guilty of culpable homicide, mm -hmm. frankly. Well, they're impeding the ability to... So there should be a access. class action suit against people who are deriding something that they haven't even read about, yes. you know, from yes. coming from ignorance. That's irresponsible and denying people their uh, well-being. I agree because, uh, like I said, I've, I've used it safely for years. And then I think in this pandemonium that we're experiencing, I started questioning my own inner truth and my own inner knowing um, based on some personal experiences I had had and people questioning it and, and getting kind of up in arms with, you know, heavy metals or harmful to the body. And really, this is in a colloidal form and it's in a nanoparticle form and, and that makes it safe. It's, 
is that is that hurtful? exactly exactly it seems the nanoparticle because of its double layer or membrane it p passes through does the work with mm -hmm. its zeta potential like its laser beam and then goes out mm -hmm. but an ion gets embedded into the tissues into the chemistry mm -hmm. protein and other molecules of the tissues mm -hmm. which we don't we don't want right okay i have a question about the electron because this is my electron that i use and mm -hmm. it's to here so definitely use a lot and giving some away um because a lot of people like to spray it on their skin and it's because of the gold mm -hmm. so electrum is colloidal silver and colloidal gold mixed together when i had asked you about it you said we well, might as well use the colloidal gold and silver combination because that's benefiting you even more. So I'm really interested. I'd always heard that gold specifically was very good for the brain. So when you're talking about taking colloidal gold and colloidal silver and it protecting the brain and from Alzheimer's disease, are you also thinking about gold when you said that? Yes, and, and there is literature now. This is all, what everything I say is evidence-based. Mm -hmm. There's literature showing that colloidal gold enhances brain function mm -hmm. uh, it, it, and it's like uh, it's an antidepressant mm -hmm. it's anti-arthritic it's an anti-inflammatory so yeah. it it has its own unique benefits now combined with the silver mm -hmm. uh, historically the ancient alchemists in the middle ages were searching for the elixir of immortality <laughs> so they they figured out or discovered that this combination of silver and gold and they mix, mix them up together in, in a crude form mm -hmm. and that was their remedy for immortality <laughs> you know unfortunately i can't give a money-back guarantee for <laughs> yeah, that i don't but, know about that one <laughs> but maybe that could work for us <laughs> okay so i'm glad i'm using the electrum and people who had researched it had reached out to me and said oh gold's really amazing for the skin is this is this true? Because yeah, I yeah, knew the skin, about yeah. the brain, but how does it benefit the the skin? Is it just that antioxidant effect? It, it has well, and it, it has not only this anti-inflammatory um, benefit because mm -hmm. uh, gold was used for uh, thousands of years for arthritis. Okay. Yeah, the, the gold um, remedies. So it's well known to medicine, but mm -hmm. this colloidal form is safer. Yes. And, and, and more effective. Uh, the, 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 there is a doctor, famous doctor, Joel Wallach, Wallach who, okay. who, who is a strong advocate of colloidal. And it turns out now that there is literature showing that the colloidal form is superior to the ionic form. They both work, but the colloidal form has been shown to be superior. Silver has also been shown to be superior. All the metals mm -hmm. have antimicrobial benefits do. copper we use in swimming pools uh, zinc mm -hmm. is antimicrobial even colloidal carbon mm -hmm. uh, so they all have but silver is the the queen of antimicrobial but, i mean they've been putting silver into bandages if somebody has is a burn victim yeah. there's silver in the bandages to prevent bacterial infection <laughs> um i mean it's used in hospitals yet there's some sort of denial that silver has this potential within the medical There's community. a lot of denial. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, of course, we know why, because silver is so effective that it's a great mm -hmm. threat to other industries. Now, mm -hmm. uh, be aware that the silver can be extremely effective on animals. Yes. Uh, people, horse farms have used it for decades on racehorses mm -hmm. because they get the best treatment. Well, and also plants, because I know of people who have used colloidal silver to prevent bacteria and fungus uh, growing in the soil of the plants and to protect the plant so i've read that as well and then i have a question because i i think we might get it but if somebody's pregnant you know they're warned to stop taking certain supplements herbs everything seems to impact this developing being how do colloidal minerals impact specifically something um, that maybe doesn't seem as common to people i mean magnesium is a pretty common <laughs> mineral to take um but say silver or gold is that something that would even be a benefit to a, a developing but there's no reason why not and mm -hmm. the, the, the literature has been done pediatric micro microbiology uh, children benefit quite well but remember that 
uh, even today, silver nitrate is used in the eyes yes. of newborns to prevent chlamydia, wow. which is an, a, a bacteria that can damage the eyes. So they put silver nitrate. Unfortunately, silver nitrate uh, is ionic. Yes. It's also corrosive because of the, the NO3, the nitrate radical. Well, they would use the nitrate to like cauterize. like a, a Yeah, it's a cauterizing, like... damaging chemical, but yet uh, it's put in the eyes of newborn infants, mm. even today, I think. Yeah. Rather than something like this that we know is safe and has... Well, they haven't heard of this. See, this would be safer. You see. Yes. Uh, so not only animals benefit, uh, poultry Poultry farms should be using it. Fish farms. Absolutely. Are, they have mm -hmm. viruses all over them. Absolutely. With fish farms. The bees, the beehives should be given colloidal silver because they wow. get a virus called the picorna virus, which is why they're, 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 uh, they're having so much, so much. I'm difficulty. just thinking if we can save the bees, then we really can save humanity. The zoos so. <laughs> should be giving their animals all, uh, colloidal silver to, uh, as a preventive. Uh, wow. proactively and, and also at plants cannabis plants thrive on colloidal silver yes. not, uh, not only when it's spread over the farm but they use it to feminize the seeds the, the zeta potential attack, uh, somehow changes the seed oh. into a feminized seeds oh. yeah. and uh, you know, maybe we, this could be good for some humans too <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about that one <laughs> last Sunday. <laughs> what 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 is a feminized feminized? Seed? What is a feminized seed? It, what what's the advantage of having it? It, 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 it? it reproduces as a sprout, and it produces a high quality uh, Cannab cannabinoid product. Yeah, which the male the, the male doesn't. So mm -hmm. feminizing has its advantages. <laughs> yes, it <does. laughs> Now, Actually, well, oh, on that topic, yes. we, we live in a world that is too masculinized and yes. testosteroneized. Yes. So we could do with some <laughs> feminization. And we, John and I will be talking about um, that shift as well, uh, because we, we really know that it's a very important time to mm -hmm. be talking about that shift that needs to happen. But that's definitely another topic altogether. Uh, I have one other question for you regarding the generators because I've spoken in the beginning that people could really just purchase their own generator. They don't need to be concerned about spending quite a lot of money um, to buy this at the store. I mean, I know I get this from you, but where, how would people get a personal generator from you? Would they just contact you personally? Would they go on a website? How can I let them know if, if they're interested, we're not pushing uh, it's just if this is something that they think would help well, them in their family. I, I, I would prefer to to help people who uh, have a track record of helping themselves. I don't right. like giving or selling something to people who don't know what they're doing. You, you, mm. you, you, you're conducting a scientific process here. Mm. So mm -hmm. people should read up about it. Right. They should read my website colloidalsolutions.net which mm -hmm. is full of information uh, 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 it's not my ideas it's the uh, it's all of the hundreds or thousands of articles that speak for themselves yeah, you're just sharing knowledge that's already yes. here and i'm just wondering to disseminate knowledge so people can be empowered mm -hmm. to help themselves see i come from britain where my medical school training taught me prevention yes. rather than cure so i've always been interested in preventive medicine very good thank you for meeting with me today and talking about this thank you if you want more information dm me contact me and i can give you john's contact and as you said the the website for it's an informational website it's it's not a store it's mm -hmm. colloidal solutions.net thank you great thank you